What is going on, everybody? I am back today to talk about the second film that I watched in my double feature at the movies. I had an absolute blast going and watching two films at the theater. I don't get to do that very often, but whenever I get the chance to, it is always a really fun time. And this movie was really high on my list to watch this year because this director made another movie that I watched earlier this year that I absolutely loved called Sick of Myself. I did a full review on that movie. It's in my contention for one of my favorite films of the year. And so knowing that and that they were working with A24 and Nicolas Cage, I was very, very, very excited to watch this movie. And the film I'm gonna be discussing with you today is Dream Scenario. Dream Scenario is directed by Christopher Borgley. Hapless family man, Paul Matthews, finds his life turned upside down when millions of strangers suddenly start seeing him in their dreams. But when his nighttime appearances take a nightmarish turn, Paul is forced to navigate his newfound stardom. So as I said, very excited to watch this. I absolutely loved Sick of Myself. So I had high expectations for this movie, especially with Nicolas Cage being involved. And I am happy to report I loved this movie. I thought it was just as absurd and over the top as Sick of Myself myself, but it was also just as poignant and brilliantly written. It's a fantastic societal commentary. I think there's a lot of depth to it. I think there's obviously a very surface level so social commentary that you can pull from it, but there's a multitude of ways that you can approach this story. And I honestly, the thing I'm the most surprised with this movie about is that more people aren't talking about Nicolas Cage's performance because I think he was incredible in this movie. And I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about it today. So Nicolas Cage plays Paul Matthews. He is a college professor, very educated person who everyone kind of just sees as in the way, even his wife and his kids. You can tell that he feels like he's an average person and that everyone around him kind of sees him as average. And he has these huge aspirations for his life. He wants to write this book. There's a very comical scene early in the film where he goes to have this lunch with this woman. We're not sure what it's about. And he calls her out because she's doing this experimental work on something that he talked about when he was in college and she ended up like stealing the terminology that he used for this research idea that he had proposed but it was like 30 years ago and so you can kind of see he's grasping at straws he, he wants to make something of his life, but he doesn't really take any initiative to do it. He talks about writing a book and he never even starts writing the book. He's very awkward and, and you, you kind of feel bad for him, but at the same time, he's not necessarily the most likable person, which is what I really like about the way the director presents these characters. And so we can see that tent sort of weird relationship at home. And at the beginning of the movie, all these people seem to be recognizing him when he goes to pick up food or when he's talking to people at school and we shortly find out that there are millions of people having dreams with him in it as simple as just like he's standing in the corner of the room and watching this dream play out and so he becomes this overnight celebrity all these people want to interview him all these people want to talk to him people want to give him these brand deals and very shortly after people's dreams start turning into horrendous nightmares and the entire film is Nicolas Cage's character navigating navigating this newfound stardom that he didn't even cause, it just randomly happened, and dealing with the ramifications of this occurring. So as I said, I loved this movie. The first thing I want to talk about is Nicolas Cage's excellent performance. I think he lives, breathes, and embodies this character in a way that fits the narrative of the film perfectly. He's very timid and to himself, and he only really acts out when he feels like it's a last resort. And I, I just, I don't know, there's something almost pathetic about his performance that is really brilliant. Uh, I really like that there's a hopeless patheticness to his performance that feels very realistic. There's elements of the character that remind me of a character that would be in a Charlie Kaufman film, which honestly is the highest compliment that I can pay a director because if you've been watching me for a while, I'm a big Charlie Kaufman fan and that's really what his character was reminding me of. There's also some Ari Aster elements, especially with Bo is Afraid. He produced this film which makes a lot of sense. And so his performance is great. There's a lot of really talented actors in this. Michael Sarah shows up and does a really nice job as well. 
And I think all of the actors work really well together. I loved the visual style of this. Obviously, there are dream sequences that are shot that look really unique. It's not like too over the top. It actually feels like what it would probably feel like to have some of these really wild and out there dreams. And I liked the presentation style. But I think what I liked the most about this movie in particular is the really poignant social commentary. I think the most on the nose part of the social commentary that people are going to get from this is is the commentary on cancel culture because this is a person who is immediately kind of thrusted into stardom from not doing anything literally they're just popping up into people's dreams and those dreams turn into nightmares and very very shortly after he starts getting blamed for all this and he's being told that it's his fault uh, people don't want him in restaurants they don't even want him at his daughter's recital at a school and the way things slowly kind of start to dismantle in his life is very similar to what happens when people get called out in our society and I think that it's really interesting because in this particular circumstance our lead character hasn't really done anything to get in that situation people just started having dreams about him and he just so happens to be in this situation where he's being called out and I think it's really interesting because the idea of cancel culture uh, in our society is really fascinating I think that there are people especially in the terms of the me too movement there there are a lot of really horrible people who have been called out by women that have done really terrible things in their lives and they are justly being taken down but I think the complexity of cancel culture is that a lot of times society wants to jump in and try to be like hey we're gonna be able to judge this and we're going to be able to play um, judge jury and executioner essentially of people's lives that we really don't know anything about the most we can do is put it in the hands of the people who are actually handling it whether that's law enforcement or a court or the people that are involved. And I think that the way that the director kind of looks at this material is through that really complex lens. It's not necessarily cut and dry to where it's like, hey, I feel one specific way. It's more just like presenting it to you as it is in our culture. And I really liked that element of the movie. I think it provides a lot of nuance and it's very thoughtful while you're watching the film as overblown and comedic as it is. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of of jabs at cancel culture there's a lot of thoughtful elements to people being called out in these types of situations and I like that there's that nuance I think there's certain topics in today's culture that people are oftentimes afraid to, to deeply examine and I like that through a comedic lens there was a way to look at this really complicated thing that exists in our society now and I appreciated that I also think on a more simple terms you can look at this as what it's like for a normal person to be kind of thrust into stardom. I think in the TikTok YouTube generation, there are people who essentially become overnight celebrities and what it's like to navigate that when every person on the street recognizes you and everyone calls you out. You can't even go buy groceries at the store without people recording you or asking you a million questions. And I liked that that was examined too. There's this really great sequence with Michael Sarah's character and the company that he works for talking about like brand deals and stuff. And I just think about these people on TikTok who are just living their lives at home and make a video and get successful and being like hey dr pepper wants to work for you or hey this company wants you to be in an ad or whatever and i it has to be really difficult to be able to navigate those types of things and to just like have that all thrusted on you at one time and i thought that was a really interesting examination as well and also the the ramifications of this type of situation on a person's family and what i like is the the character of the wife is also not necessarily the best person there's things about her that she show her as a very caring parent but there's also things that kind of show her as a little seedy and kind of like overbearing in ways where she just feels like she's very um overprotective of her husband and very much like not giving him free reign to everything and and it exists in both of them they're both very flawed characters and i've liked that about both of the films that this director has made that i've seen is that he creates these very multifaceted characters that aren't necessarily just good or bad they're very complex Complicated, and I think that always makes for a very interesting watch. This movie gets in some very absurd situations that I was laughing so hard I almost cried. It was really just a very entertaining experience, and I think if you get an opportunity to watch this movie, I would 100% recommend doing so. It was one of the most unique films that I've seen of the year. So have you seen Dream Scenario? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was brilliant. It made me laugh 
It was very thoughtful, and I'm already excited to watch it again. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.